Welcome to Anxious Tea Time, the show where we discuss the wonderfully different aspects of mental health. I'm Ellie. And I'm Julie. And this week we're going to be discussing friendships and mental health. Indeed we are. I feel like most people know how important friendships are in your everyday life, but there's so much research suggesting just how important, not just like mentally, which is what we'll be discussing mainly, but just in terms of health, well-being, satisfaction, happiness, just like your immune system can be affected by how close you can feel to your friends, how many friends you, uh, you feel you have, and on the other side, how detrimental loneliness can be. So in this episode, we're going to be discussing more the impact of friendships, the benefits of them, how to navigate friendships with mental health, and we're going to talk a lot about how to identify more unhealthy healthy aspects of friendships and how to combat them and how to grow more healthy and sustainable friendships. Because, yeah, it is very difficult to understand which is a healthy and unhealthy relationship because it could just be something as small as them being mildly controlled and almost guilt-tripping you into not wanting to spend time with someone else. And it's very difficult to determine when it is it's affecting your mental health and the way that you're going to act because a friendship doesn't just determine the way that you're acting now. It can determine the way that you're going to act in the future and with future people, which means that this one friendship that you have can be completely different compared to everything else but then it can change you so drastically that you trust less people and you're like oh this is what friends are which means that I'm gonna have to be this specific way like the way that I am now has been determined by the previous friendships that I have so if I have any problems like oh, I'm not gonna do this because I know for a fact that someone won't like it but that friend could be like no that, that's totally fine what are you talking about so it's really difficult to determine if it is unhealthy or not yeah because we're so like social creatures and I relate to what you're saying like I'm, I almost feel like I'm a sum of the people I've met and interacted with in my life in a, in a good way. For me, at least, my friends are so like ridiculously important to me and they've helped me so much with uh, my own mental health. But the other side of that is like, well, a lot of my mental health thus depend on my friends. Yeah. And how to navigate that can be incredibly difficult, especially when uh, both or more parties involved have maybe mental health issues and how to navigate that uh, responsibly and maintaining boundaries and again just recognizing what is good for us and as you were saying that like well you you get used to uh, certain kind of friends or you're used to way friendships work and or you're treated and obviously that can kind of create a blueprint for how you expect to be treated in the future so if you're lucky like I think I've been personally when I had very good friends that kind of helps me when I create new friends because I expect a friendship to be mostly healthy uh, and to be very good. However, that could easily change um, if you're used to maybe poor friends and that's kind of what you expect from people. Yeah, it can be very self-destructive, especially if you don't do anything about it. And if you don't notice it, so that there are several different things that you can see to notice that you're in an unhealthy friendship, it just means that you're going to continue this way and it damages you very, very slowly and it whittles you down. Yeah. that you become this person where someone walks up to you and they're just like, what, what, what's going on? Like, I don't understand why you wouldn't do this, that or the other. And you're like, well, the friendships that I've had so far, what, I could never do anything like that. But with a healthy friendship, it just means that you get to be yourself and grow into a better person. And it just means that you can help other people as well. So when you make these new friends, you can be like, hey, this is what friendship is actually meant to be like. Yeah, I, I really like that. Uh, and I think when we going to discuss um, friendships further I think it's important to note that all friendships don't need to be super deep and intimate and intense to mm. be very good friendships I mean for me at least like I have friends I might grab a coffee with occasionally maybe catch a movie with or I have those friends I could like call at like 4am sobbing if I <laughs> wanted to and I think you need all of that I don't think that like a friendship necessarily needs to be built on sharing everything uh, and being like incredibly close like sometimes you just want someone to have fun with uh, yeah. or just kind of like maybe complain about bad work with and I think that's as important to be honest yeah because you have to understand that it, friendship isn't just one thing it could be so different with so many different people so when you look at someone else's friendship and be like oh that's not what mine's like that's not what you should see it shouldn't be a comparison between what other people have because of it's different between everyone so it could be that really deep meaningful thing where if you're upset they'll be the person you call or if you just wanted to go out and have fun you 
could call this specific person. So there are different types of healthy, but there are also different types of unhealthy as well. Oh, definitely. And I think um, the fact that friendships can look so different makes it very hard to determine when a friendship can be more unhealthy. Uh, and I think one thing for me that's important to highlight as we had this discussion is that like, when we talk about unhealthy friendships... That doesn't mean that if your friendships might be a bit more unhealthy, you should end it, it's over, you're both horrible people or they're a horrible person or you are. Like, that's not how people work. Like, we're all incredibly complex and messy. And, of course, like, each friendship is going to have different aspects. And sometimes you... We we all make mistakes. uh, And sometimes you're not on your A game. Sometimes your friend is going through a rough time and might not be the best friend for you, and that's absolutely okay. I think what we kind of want to talk about is when friendships can turn unhealthy long-term. Yeah. And even if you recognise that a friendship is unhealthy long-term and that it's very detrimental to you, that doesn't mean that, like, oh, cut the person out from your life unless you want to. It just means that, like, oh, you might want to take a, a second look and maybe try to talk to your friend or make some drastic changes if you feel like it's negatively affecting you. Yeah, and what you should know is if you don't cut them off completely, you shouldn't just leave everything completely unspoken. Just, oh, yeah. <laughs> just because of it's not unhealthy enough to cut them off, it doesn't mean that it's healthy enough that you shouldn't talk about it. You should communicate with that person and respond respect their boundaries and they should respect yours if they were to tell you something and you didn't feel very comfortable doing something you should be able to tell them and if you're not then that's one sign of an unhealthy relationship if you don't feel like you're comfortable to tell them that it's not okay definitely and I think um, us humans basically have a very have a tendency towards black and white thinking yeah. especially when things get difficult so I think it's very easy to end up being like oh it's my friend who's 100% in the wrong and they're being actively malicious towards Towards me, they want to hurt me, or the opposite. I'm the only reason why our friendship is having problem, and everything is my fault. Uh, and I think it's very important to to try to move away from that kind of thinking, have a more nuanced framework of yeah, everyone, including ourselves, have the capacity of being unhealthy or toxic and probably have been in the past the same way other people have and sometimes maybe not being the best friend is necessarily out of malice I would kind of counter most of the time most people don't mean to do harm most people don't want to actively hurt their friends it's just something that accidentally happens so I think as we're having this conversation it's very important to be just compassionate towards yourself and others and we, we don't mean to vilify any party even if someone might be displaying these behaviors that doesn't make, make you a bad person that should never have a friendship yeah. <laughs> what we want to talk about is the common signs of an unhealthy relationship and the borderline of it being abusive or unhealthy so we want to discuss all the different aspects that could be possible that could affect you and you have to make sure that you keep an eye out for these specific things yeah definitely and it's very hard to make the distinction between abusive and unhealthy behaviors because it's quite a big overlap for me i would say that all abusive behavior is unhealthy but all unhealthy behavior isn't necessarily abusive yeah and i think the simplest definition i could give in terms of our discussion is that abuse often tends to come with a big power difference yeah so we can both uh, engage in all all, like unhealthy behaviors but if it comes like such like a notable power difference that someone takes advantage of that would tend to be towards like abuse Uh, and again it does not mean that everyone who's done something unhealthy or abusive are horrible abusive people it's just that it's something to be mindful and careful of. Yeah, that's completely true. But it's something that can be not very distinctive. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It, it's it's something that there's a line and you don't know when that line has been crossed. So abusive to someone else may not seem abusive to the other person, but you have to respect their boundaries, not just your own. So you have to make sure that you may not be a horrible person and see that what you're doing isn't horrific, but to someone else, they may be like, no, that's, that's too far for me. So you have to make sure that there is communication between people. Yeah, that's gonna. We're gonna come back to communication a bit as well because um, we are going to talk about uh, signs of unhealthy friendships, but we're also going to talk about how to create um, better and more healthier friendships. So I guess a very common sign of an unhealthy friendship is something to be mindful of is the intensity yeah. of, of, of a friendship. Uh, if someone is very, very, very dominating for example, they take out like all of your time, they also want to hang out and you feel kind of like lost in them and to a certain extent that can be really fun if you're both like in on it and yeah. you 
maybe just you maybe just met your best friend, you have everything in common, you want to do all these things together. That isn't necessarily bad or unhealthy, but if things can kind of overpower other things in your life, that's something to be a bit uh, mindful of. And also, if someone's very intense and always want to be around you and always texting you and talking to you, it can be very difficult to get kind of the breathing room to evaluate the friendships yeah. when you don't have time to even think about it because you're always in the middle of it. Especially considering that friendships isn't just a one pace thing. For different people and different people that you meet specifically as well, there'll be time that you grow in that friendship and the pace of it so it could be with one friendship it may take you a long time to get comfortable with them and do these specific things but with someone else it could be a week and you're going on holiday together yeah you're clicking immediately it's about how you click and how that other person is as well so the pace is very important and it can get very intense for one party or even both parties Mm. at the same time especially in a new friendship you both want to be the yes person you'll be like yeah oh I'll do that of course I will I, I completely feel comfortable in this situation Situation, yeah, totally. And the other person's doing the exact same thing. Yeah, definitely. So it can be extremely uncomfortable for people and it can get even obsessive where that other person's just like, do this, do this, do this. And it can be extremely uncomfortable for everyone. Yeah, and again, this goes for the more long term dynamic of friendship because, of course, it's like, oh, if you just met and you have everything in common. Of course, things can be, like, intensive at periods. Maybe you haven't seen them in a long time and they come to stay with you for a few weeks. Like, obviously that is fine, but if it's, like, long-term, you feel like a a friendship is so intense that it's almost, like, draining, uh, then you might want to take a step back and evaluate. Another thing that people should really look out for is possessiveness. That's where the, the obsessiveness of someone can become so intense that you may hang out all the time, but when it comes to the point where they're like, oh, so you're seeing someone else as well? that's when you know that the things aren't completely okay, that you should be able to talk to other people and do things of someone else without someone guilt-tripping you into thinking that you're a horrible person for having other friends. Yeah, and I think it's uh, important to be very mindful of that a lot of this can show in very subtle ways. Yeah. Being possessive isn't necessarily me saying to you that, like, oh, you are your other friends. I don't like that. You should stop. I mean, that can happen as well. But it just might be that, like, oh, you will tell me that you hung up with another person and I might start being like, oh, oh, okay, and be really off with you for a few days and maybe not want to respond to your text and kind of just be really weird with you and not actually talking about it. Yeah, it can be extremely passive-aggressive in that context of it's not always going to be full front, just don't hang out with them, it's them or me. Yeah. It can be just something small, like, oh, I'm going to take longer to reply to you than I usually do because of you hung out with someone else and that hurts me. Or I'll be uh, bad-talking the person you were with. Like, yeah. oh, your friend, were like, oh, she's kind of she's kind of mean, isn't she? Like, oh, no, I don't really like her much and I don't know if you should hang out with her. I would never do that. Or she doesn't get you like I do. Yeah, it, it, it can get, get, get it very scary really quickly, but I think it's also important to acknowledge where that behaviour might be coming from. Because uh, I think uh, for a lot of us who engage in that kind of almost possessive behaviour, it often comes from a place of, of an intense anxiety. Yeah. Because often you care so much for someone, and maybe you've lost friends or relationships or family in the past, so you become always overcompensating. Like, no, I love this friend so much, I cannot lose them. Yeah. Uh, so you end up overcompensating. So it doesn't necessarily need to come from a malicious place, it just can end up in a very unhealthy dynamic. Yeah, see, that's where communication is always key, because if you do pent it up, and don't say anything or if you've noticed your friend behaving in that certain way don't just ignore it or get annoyed that they're behaving that way communication and conflict resolution is perfect in these situations because of you both need to understand each other to know exactly how your friendship's going to work yeah definitely um and i think the earlier you kind of establish this kind of communication the better it is especially when it comes to mental illness and again like maybe anxiety disorders and other things that might make us very very anxious and maybe more prone to engaging in unhealthy behavior because we're so scared of losing someone it doesn't need to be this big conversation you need to have it can just be like a kind of like a little check you know like a heads up like oh hi just like oh just so you know like I'm I sometimes get really anxious about friendship and stuff and I know you're doing this concert with this other friend do you maybe want to do something with me right afterwards so I will feel more secure yeah. it's fine if you don't want to but like that would make me feel better and most of the time of, of course your friends will most likely accommodate that if you make your need clear and kind of explain it a little bit. I think an important point to make is you have to make sure that this doesn't turn into guilt tripping because obviously you can make this point to your friend that you could feel worried but you 
you can't make them feel trapped in this situation and discuss how if they don't do this, you will feel this certain way, which will be their fault, which means that your happiness is dependent on if they do this or not. You can't guilt trip them into being friends with you, essentially. Yeah. And I think this can just lean on how you communicate with people in general, and especially for those sorts of mental health issues, um, often struggle with a lot of guilt. And that is fine, but it's good to be mindful about how you communicate that. Because let's say like I make a mistake in a friendship and I, and I hurt you in a way I didn't mean to and I want to apologise to you for maybe being a bit possessive or anything like that. It's a difference between saying, oh, I'm sorry I acted like that because of X, Y, Z reason and I'm going to try to make it better the next time but I see why this hurt you and going, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm the worst person ever. You must hate me. I would have hated me. I didn't mean to do this. Like, oh, I'm so, oh, you, I, I don't deserve you. You deserve better than me. And again, even though I feel like I'm being honest, that is a lot to put on another person because you can put the other person in a position where they now need to comfort you. Yeah. Even though you were the one to hurt them. It all can get very complicated very quickly, but it's just something to be very mindful about how you communicate, even if you are being honest and you're not being malicious, how things can come across. Yeah, because guilt can go both ways because it could be guilty forefront and just being like, oh, you made me feel this way. You've hurt my feelings, even though it's something that you just like, oh, I'm really sad because you did this. I spent the entire day alone where you got to have fun. Or it could be victimising yourself where they now feel bad for something that you've done. So it could be guilting them in different ways. So it isn't just this one set point that you have to look out for. It could be anything and it could be to as small as being a little bit passive aggressive to just saying, oh, I was really alone. I had some really dark thoughts and things things like that so yeah. it could be from one end to the other extreme yeah definitely and I think the way I've had it being put best is that your uh, mental illness uh, and problems aren't your fault but they're your responsibility yeah and it's your responsibility to make sure you do not actively harm others and that you keep checking in and and, and again if you might think that like something kind of come across as a bit uh, unhealthy or guilt trippy you can just check in or reassure someone and let's say that like I say I, I tell you that like oh I know you're going to the concert I'm feeling really anxious about it could we maybe hang out afterwards I might tell you afterwards that like oh just so you know when I was telling you that like it is fine I really want you to have fun and I don't like I know it's not you know just go have fun I'll sort myself out it's fine I didn't mean to, to make it come across that way like that's very fine because sometimes misunderstandings do happen and it's always just good to check in in a way yeah it can't just be you have to be very clear with people because of if you feel like that there's something that needs to be said then there's not much that should hold you back this is your friend this is someone who should be able to understand what you're talking about so when you're having this discussion with someone if you feel like there's something left unsaid even just asking them like is this okay I don't want to put you in a position where you feel like you have to hang out with me because I'll be sad. So you have to make sure that you're both okay with these boundaries in the first place. Oh yeah, definitely. I think that leads us on to another unhealthy aspect that can happen in friendships is when either party tends to deflect responsibility a lot. Yeah. Which also can get very complicated. And to be fair, we all do this to a certain extent. We all like to do this. I'm like, oh, I got a bad grade in my test. Well, I've been really busy lately and the teacher hates me and it's not my fault. And oh, I was late to work because of traffic yeah. I have no personal responsibility whilst when other people do something uh, wrong we're like oh it's the person who chose to be this way yeah. so of course we all have this inherent nature to almost do this a little bit uh, to, 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 to a certain extent but it's always important to be mindful of if you or your friend tend to do this all the time. Yeah, because it, 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 it's understandable that life isn't just, it isn't easy, mm. that there are going to be ups and downs and there's sometimes where you're not going to want to talk to someone or you're just going to want your own space, that you're going to sort of make them feel a bit unloved and then afterwards explain what's happened. But if it's constant that you, they only want you there when they want you there and not when you also need them as well it mm. has to be both sided in the way that you're not just using them for when you're happy and when you're sad you're like no I don't want to talk to them anymore because that's just using the person in a way that's just for your own benefit it yeah. shouldn't just be just oh this is when I want you around we're done because you can only use so many excuses because yeah life is difficult 
but you have to make time for the people that you care about. It can't just be when I want you around. Oh, definitely. And again, that goes for more long term, because we're all going through rough times, so we might have demanded more of our friends than we have been able to give back. Yeah. But if this is a pattern that always happens long term, you might want to look into that. An example of this happening when it comes to deflecting the guilt onto someone else is that you could feel upset about something that someone else has done. So they may have done something that was to hurt your feelings. And when you go to explain to them what they've done, that they're defensive in such a way that they put the blame back onto you. That, oh, I did this because of I was upset or you've done this before. And yeah, it, I lashed out at you because you hadn't been texting me the entire day, so I panicked and that's why I lashed out because you didn't text me. Yeah, so it's, it's that defensive way that pushes the blame onto you, not just putting it onto someone else. Like It's not just not their fault, it's your fault. Yeah, which can be a very fine line to walk because obviously you want to explain to someone that, like, oh, hey, I felt very agitated because you hadn't texted me the entire day and I got really worried if you were angry with me, so I became really defensive. But there's a way of doing that that's not putting it completely on the other person. Instead of being like, oh, hey, I did this thing which wasn't okay because of these reasons, but I still, I shouldn't have done that. I should have done these other things instead and I will try to not let it happen again because I know it wasn't an okay thing to do towards you. Yeah. Instead of being like, well, it's your fault I acted this way. Yeah, and what this can lead to is manipulation. And that can happen in so many different ways. Like, they can control your decisions or actions or emotions or who you hang around with through different ways. It's not just through guilt-tripping you or saying, oh, this is, this is your fault, you have done this, therefore you can't do this anymore. It could be anything for... It's kind of hard to spot. Because it, really it, it could be really subtle or passive aggressive, or it can be very upfront, and they twist your thoughts. Because it's all they could even start rumors and be like, "Oh, that other friend that you talked to, they said this to me the other day," which almost twists you into not wanting to hang out with that other person. Yeah, and we're talking about manipulation. It's kind of again, it's very difficult to define because manipulation itself just means to affect someone's behavior. So yeah. if you go to a bar and that bar has a sign that says "Don't drink and drive," that's technically manipulation because it's. <laughs> something that's trying to alter your behavior yeah however most people wouldn't say that that's a bad thing <laughs> that's yeah. like a don't drink and drive sign at a, at a club for example however i think um for the purposes of our discussion manipulation is kind of a conscious maybe um way of trying to alter someone's behavior without actually being upfront about it yeah so let's say it like oh i feel like i would need more support from you in our friendship and instead of saying that, like, oh, hey, I'm going through a really rough time right now, would you maybe be able to see me this Tuesday? That would be great. I would just be maybe more passive-aggressive. I would kind of make it a big deal, like, look how upset I am. And being like, oh, no, you wanted this other friend. And, oh, I I, I was so upset. I broke down when you weren't there. Uh, and trying to find, like, a way around things and without asking for it. And what's very, like, malicious about that is, not malicious, but I guess insidious to a certain extent, is that, like, when you do it like that, like, you don't really talk about things you just kind of implicitly want to make someone do something you kind of take away you, 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 t- you take away the clear opportunity for communication from the other person yeah because if i said oh i'm going through a really rough time right now would you be able to spend a bit more time with me this week that opens up a conversation where you could be oh yes that would be that would be fine or you could say oh i would love to but i have a lot of other things going on right now however we could do this thing yeah but with me not having this conversation with you it kind of just leaves both of us in like a really weird place because you feel that maybe you can't say anything because I haven't asked anything of you uh, explicitly. Yeah, but what it can also do is push you into an uncomfortable situation where you don't feel like you can say no. Yeah. And that's some, that's not something that you should have in a friendship. And if it starts off this way, then usually things like this continue where if a similar situation comes up they don't even need to explicitly say anything or imply you know exactly what you have to do even if you don't want to do it because this has happened before and it becomes this unhealthy habit of I have to go and see this person because they're feeling this way even though I know that I'm not very comfortable with it and that gets more and more unhealthy and creates more bad habits in the friendship yeah definitely and I think an important thing to note is that like often these kind of like manipulative dynamics happen over a very long period of time because obviously if, if I'm in the beginning of our friendships were like, oh no, I panicked and I had the worst time because you didn't text me and how could you do that? Mm. You probably like kind of work out to be like, hey, I, I won't stand for this. 
But if it just starts off with me being a bit like, oh, it would have been nice if you were there, it was all right. And then it kind of keeps slowly but surely happening until we both get very used to it, to the point where even me maybe uh, being quite manipulative towards you don't even pick up on it because, yeah. oh, this is just how we communicate. This is how our friendship is, which makes it so incredibly hard to pick up on. Yeah, but it, it could also be as small as just making you feel slightly guilty if you don't do something. So they manipulate you in a way that you feel bad if you don't do something else to help them, even if they didn't say anything to start off with. Like you said, it can be so small and slowly build that you don't even notice what you're doing and you don't feel like it is unhealthy and it's something that you need to really take control of before it can get out of hand. But it can be like, this is so incredibly complicated because, again, people are incredibly complicated because it can go the other way as well. For example, if uh, you were to tell me that, like, oh, yeah, like, yeah, oh, it was nice seeing you the other week. Um, afterwards, I had kind of like a rough time because I was going through some stuff at work, but it's okay. And if the other party then feels like, oh my god, this is my fault, I should have been that, I feel really guilty, mm. that may not be the problem of the person sharing that they were having a hard time. Yeah. Right, I think both of us might have a tendency to do that a bit, to be, like, wanting to feel responsible for other people. Yeah. And that's not the other people's fault. Yeah. That's that, that's on us, so that's also something to be conscious of, too. Sometimes you might feel, like, way more guilty than what is reasonable without the other party being demanding it of you at all. What this behaviour can lead to is isolation because of mm. they can almost manipulate you into cutting everyone else off without even realising that you're doing so. It could just it could be as forefront as it's them or me. Yeah. And you have to cut those people out. Or it's just keeping you away from other friends and family, really discreetly doing so. Just, I have this plan with someone else, and they're like, oh, well, we could do this if you want. You've always wanted to do this. And it's almost like, I'm going to act better than that other person mm. so you won't hang out with those other people. Yeah, it could be a thing like, oh, I don't really get on with your other friends, so I really don't want to be in that group thing you're doing. But I'll be really sad if you don't spend time with me, so can you just spend time with me as well yeah even though your reasons for not wanting to be with those other people is genuine um uh, and, and honest it can still end up in a very unfortunate dynamic if you both feel very isolated from other people it can also lead to codependency you yeah. feel that like oh this one other person is almost completely responsible for my well-being and happiness that it's probably worth taking a step back and reevaluating what's actually going on. Another sign uh, of an unhealthy friendship can be too much belittlement, which can be very difficult to notice. I mean, belittlement would just like, oh, undermining the things you do or just being like directly hostile. Yeah. But I think a difficult uh, aspect of this is that it, it can come in the form of humour. Yeah. Because you're like taking the piss out of a mitt. <laughs> but it's just to a certain extent, it's like, well, do you mean it? Am I being genuine? Yeah. Uh, which can be very difficult to navigate and again it's not to be like oh you, you can't ever joke with your friends because you all love a bit of dark humor it is to be mindful how it makes you feel and maybe occasionally checking in like oh hey you know that i don't actually mean that i do generally think it's like nice to have you here um and i think that kind of sums it up to all this unhealthy behavior so like how to combat these unhealthy behaviors and how to build more healthy and sustainable friendships because obviously again we're all messy people and we're all gonna make mistakes and nothing is black and white and again it's not completely on you for a healthy friendship to be made like it's on all parties involved but I think one like universal tips is more to first of all obviously communicate try to communicate as early as possible always maybe check in like oh hey I I noticed that like oh last night I told you these things you know I don't mean it like that right uh, being more considerate for other people's time and maybe giving people an out saying like oh hey I would really appreciate it if you could come with me to this thing but I get it if you're busy like it's fine trying to generally ask about things that are bothering you in the friendship and not assume hostility yeah. and not assume that the other person is out to get you, is out to harm you but assume that like, oh hey I know you probably didn't mean this but when you said this thing, that really hurts me because it makes me feel that, like you don't actually value your time together or anything like that and try to make any kind of implicit communication that might be harmful 
explicit. Again, you can check in to be like, oh, hey, after I said I was going to go with this other friend to the concert, I felt the mood between us get a bit weird. Or was that just me? Yeah. And you can hopefully open a conversation from that. But again, like, this isn't meant to vilify anyone. This isn't meant to, like, oh, you should ghost all your friends and never <laughs> see them again. Obviously not. It's just a thing to be a bit more mindful of, especially in ourselves as well, because we all have the capacity to engage in these behaviours in one way or another. And the goal is to just build really good, sustainable friendships for uh, our own sake as well as the friends around us. Yeah, especially considering in this day and age, friendship is so incredibly complex because there's so many different things that you can do and there's so many different types of friendships and relationships yeah, and, and ways us, yeah. to connect with people now that, especially with belittling, it, it, as our generation, this is something that we do constantly. Yeah. We're always just sort of bashing Part of each our humor, other saying yeah. that, oh, haha, you did this, you're you're dumb. Yeah. I can't wait for you to leave. <laughs> oh, yeah, that sort of, it's, it's that sort of humour that we have together that you may take it in a way that is harmful, but you have to understand that it's not always going to have a malicious intent behind it. That even if you feel like that you've hurt someone else's feelings, that you should discuss it. But also if someone has hurt your feelings over something that may not have hurt your feelings previously, but it's something that they've brought up several times that you're starting to think, do they actually, actually yeah, do yeah. they actually think this thing about me? So it's also your responsibility to approach them and say hey you've said this a few times it's kind of concerning me like is that actually something you think oh no it's completely fine or if you know they're not great yeah this bothers me (laughs) yeah I mean no one like none of us are mind readers so obviously it's your responsibility to make yourself heard to a certain extent that like oh hey I know you keep joking about that like how you never want to do the podcast with me again and that you (laughs) can't wait to be done with me after an episode do you really mean that (laughs) well but yes just take accountability for yourself be mindful of others and just try to check in on yourself and others occasionally yeah because when joking around gets a bit too far you can see that it's either affecting you or someone else when it starts breaking your confidence or if it's someone insulting a skill that you have or something that you do that you're doing it a little bit less or you're feeling not as confident to do it anymore that's when you know it's starting to affect you because you may laugh along and may not even understand to yourself that it's affecting you because sometimes it's not always just oh that hurt my feelings sometimes it's always in the back of your head like oh I, I don't want to do that today for some unknown reason so yeah. you have to understand that as soon as it starts affecting you or if you see it affecting someone else that's especially when you should bring it up if you're unaware of it happening yeah definitely like if you have plans to see a friend and you find yourself dreading it yeah. That might be a good um, example or like an instance of where you can sit down and analyse it. Because it could just be that, like, oh, you've been tired from a long week and you, you'd rather just be home and sleep. That's okay. It happens to the best of us. But if it, there are certain people you're like, oh, I hope she won't be there. And like, oh, yeah. I don't really... I hope I can leave early. I'm going to find an excuse. And it's consistently with one person, that might be worth examining as well. But that's when you can look at the many things that you can do to see if your relationship with someone is healthy or not because we can talk about all these things that you could see in this but it could be little things or it could be one of them or many of them building up and it's not something that you can notice straight away and we understand that we say you should be communicating with people but especially for people with mental health it's not as easy as just you have made me sad and yeah. I want to talk about confrontation it. Confrontation can be the most terrifying impossible thing in the world. Yeah so we, we completely understand that it's not as easy as just talk about it because of especially with yeah. mental health it's not something that you could just throw at someone's face face you're extremely uncomfortable and you want to stay in your own comfort zone but you're responsible for yourself as well so you have to make sure that you push forward and talk to other people yeah and find a way to communicate yeah. it doesn't need to be oh, I need to sit down and have a serious conversation right now it could just be that like oh maybe a few days after the fact when I have time to process I will send a little text and see and because that feels distant and safe and then I can just wait for you to reply and have some time to think it through like find things that works for you you specifically because obviously like you don't need to be always being the one to be always confrontational yeah because most friendships don't require that anyways no not at all so yeah this is the our episode on friendships or unhealthy friendships we would love to pick up this topic another time especially diving more into boundaries in terms of mental illness for yourself and especially with other people in your life who also have mental illness and how to navigate that because that's a very complicated interesting topic as well Uh, but for now I have been Gulli I have been Nelly. And this has been Anxious Tea Time.